Not even so long ago I experimented a bit making adjustable parallel on the shape and as we can see it works perfectly fine. And then I started to ask me some questions. What if we don't have a shaper? We need to come up with another solution. For example on the milling machine. And as you can see I already experimented a bit over here too. Now this thing is not finished of course because I have to cut it in an angle and the other side is not even finished at all. But it was just to see if it works. And indeed it does. Because these two parts now are really fixed together. When I unloosen this screw here. Here you go. I think that's a very nice result. Maybe I should explain a bit here. This one I made on the shaper. These are just two parts. That's all. And because the groove here in the middle in the female part is not deep enough. I can't put a screw in it to pinch it together. The other one I made here on the milling machine, I'm gonna open it up. This one is one part, male, one part. The female are three parts. These are two halves together and between two there's a piece of sheet metal. And then I riveted it together with five rivets. I don't know if the camera will pick it up. The copper rivets are not really a success. So I installed two other rivets. I will turn it around, maybe see better. Which is a steel wire. And that works a lot better. To cut all the dovetails in my three little parts here. I used of course my 60 degree dovetail cutter. But what if you don't have a 60 degree dovetail cutter? Or even no dovetail cutter at all? As always I of course made a highly detailed plan here. Yeah? The idea is to set my end mill, just a normal regular end mill, at 45 degrees. Of course you can also set your work pieces at 45 degrees and cut more or less this shape. So every spot here will be a right shoulder. I have the materials ready here. A cute little block to make this part first with this uh, head shape idea thing. This will be perfectly fine. This part will become these two, so first I cut the features in here and then cutting it in two and a little piece of sheet metal to put between the two halves. Because my parallel is bigger than the part I have to make, I will fill the empty space with some uh, shim thing here. That will work. Set the head at 45. Before I started cutting this feature here, my part, of course, first I cleaned up this surface in the shaper, so I cheated a bit. But of course you can do this also in the milling machine. Fly, cut it and you're good to go. Now making this kind of shape, I don't know if you can see it, is a little bit challenging to take measurements. I wanted this distance here to be more or less 2 millimeters. So between this part and this part here, in this thing, 
I will have a little, a little bit more room to keep this distance, if you see what I mean. But of course to take measurements on this kind of weird things, it's a little bit complicated. So I first started to cut this 45 degrees on the top here. And of course this point here you cannot use it as a reference because it's a knife more or less. So what I did, I touched off with my end middle right here somewhere and this was my zero point in this direction. I moved up somewhere over here and started cutting a 0.5 millimeter cut in depth. And then every time 0.5 millimeter and move the cutter up and down until I had this result. And I think it worked. Got you. I hold the parts here in place with two pieces of high precision wood and it seems to work just fine. I think the result is not too bad. It's a tiny tiny bit out of square, really not much. Now that I have this part more or less in a rough shape, but it's okay, I can start take measurements to make the other part that comes right here of course. Looking like this, it seems to fit, but there's way too much wiggle, so I cut a little bit too deep. But maybe I can save it when I put a screw or maybe two screws in here, so I will pinch it together. And here's the thing, and of course I cheated a little bit. The little piece of sheet metal that is between here, here it is. I took it out and installed a smaller one. And as you can see now the thing works perfectly fine. And I didn't take the time to square up these two sides here, because I think this one will not work. Now, as is, it, it seems to work, not, not really a problem, it slides very well. And when I tighten the screws, 
no movement at all. So this is a success. But the way I made this one is right here. And I think there is a little bit of problem with it. As is, it works perfectly fine. No problem. But if we put pressure on the thing, for example, use it in a vise and you want to tap your workpiece down, there could be a problem. Because these two surfaces here are in an angle, with pressure the whole thing risk maybe to open a bit and then we will have some wiggle in the thing. It opens up and then you think, okay, this is the way I, have, I want it, and you tighten the screw and the thing will become a little bit higher. Maybe, I think, could be. I think the way to go, if you don't have a dovetail cutter, make one. And then here is the result of this one. If you put this one under pressure, because these surfaces are square in relationship to the pressure direction, there will be no movement at all. And the thing will always work. And the more I am into this experiment, the more I think about it, the more I'm convinced that the shaper is the way to go with this. Because when you cut the parts, the cutting tool will cut exactly in line, in the same line than the movement. The dovetail cutter will leave a surface with indents a little bit, right? So, and you can even feel it between this one, dovetail cutter, this one, shape, this one is a very nice slide. So I think the shaper is the best option. And next time I make one, that's exactly what I'm gonna use. And now that we're talking shapers, we can as well continue. In last week's video I made this system here to support the table of the shaper. And some of you pointed out that it could maybe be a good idea to use roller bearings in here instead of the sliding block. And indeed I was playing myself with the same idea. And of course, with a bearing it could be a very smooth ride. So the idea I can understand, but there's also a little bit problems with it. When the shaper is cutting, the table is pushed down, so this bearing will have all the loads. And the bearing itself is pushing on just a line on this surface. So this surface will wear very quickly. Second thought, a shaper makes a big mess. There's ships flying all over the place and there's of course also a ton of ships that falls on this surface. The bearing will roll over these chips, so will lift the table and will of course also make indents in this surface. If we use the sliding block, just put, put down, that's it, no tight, okay. we tight this bolt of course. Because this angle here is square, or more or less square, if there are ships on the surface, it will be pushed away, so there will be no junk lying around between this block surface and the sliding surface. Also, the table moves only on the backstroke, so no cutting forces, the table moves there is no down force, so it just touches, there's no pressure on it. When the shape cuts, down forces, the table itself is not moving left or right. So I think the block is the best solution, because it pushes over the 
og Surface 